Hey guys, Kane here and in this video we're going to go over again how to have a good start at Art of Conquest. Now I know I've covered a video like this a while back and I do know that it had picked up. However, some information in that video kind of expired just because of how many updates the game has received. So instead of bashing a lot of information into one video, I will split up uh, that kind of information in a variety of videos, probably like 10 plus videos or so, each covering every single topic. And if something will change, I will just redo that one topic and make sure that playlist is kind of updated. So without further ado, the first topic that we will cover up will be the heroes. Now, as I have said quite a lot of times, Basric is still the best hero that you can acquire in the early game. He will solo clear the void mirror stages up until like level 80, close to level 80 by just himself, without any army and without any other heroes. You don't really need many items, all you need is uh, the highest level possible, some subpar items which increase critical hit chance and attack speed, I do believe you will still require Halkian's Edge and any prism of your choice. Aside from that, um, the second hero which is pretty much contending Basric is Valerie. Now as you can see my Valerie doesn't have very good items but even so she does an incredible amount of damage. And what I can tell you about Valerie is that you don't need any good items on Valerie for her to start like carrying you in terms of events, in terms of uh, PvP and all that kind of stuff. All you require is high level, all you require is high attack, which can be from either the prism or like overall uh, buffs from your research, runestone temple and etc. You may require the Arcanist Fury to essentially increase some of her damage uh, in terms of burning, but as far as I know, it's not a huge requirement. Then the only thing that you may require is a proper artifact. Now I don't have Mana Lock Codex at 5 star, which would increase magic damage and mana ability damage, but at the moment this is the best one that I can spare for her. Uh, itemization like this is probably okay for now, it's not the best as I've said before, but she still does over 100, 150 million damage in PvP. Some players have like level 50 Valerie with like same or similar items, no prism whatsoever, and they're able to do like 200 million damage. So keep that in mind, like you don't need almost anything to get this hero going. She will be like probably the strongest hero in the game even if you invest into her. The minimum uh, which you can invest into Valerie is more or less uh, a couple of the hero researches which unlock at castle level 20 to 25 ish. Not entirely sure of when they do unlock, but they are the critical hit chance, which is uh, the uh, level 7, and the critical hit damage, which is the level 8 researches. Now, the level 7 also increases magic damage done by the heroes for 30 seconds in the match, so this is kind of a requirement for you to get. And the reason why Valerie is probably the most important hero to have are events such as Pinnacle, events such as Kingdom Guardian. Valerie can solo clear you those stages or events. I've said quite a lot of times and I have made quite a lot of videos where the player which is not very high in core power, rank 40 in yellow, uh, more specifically, this person has invested a lot onto the mage researches and in terms of Valerie. And her Valerie has like 1 million attack at level 55, 56. 
and she's pretty much able to solo clear entire Kingdom Guardian and Pinnacle with just her Valerie. Now of course you have to put like two frontline army and you have to put Dragon and etc. But Valerie just pretty much clears the events with faster scores than people in like the top 7. Like she clears the event faster than rank 5, 6, 7, 8 even 9 and 10 and etc not to mention all the people below that so keep in mind valerie can probably be the next best hero to acquire and even more so than basric as basric is just like the beginning few weeks maybe up to a month or two and pretty much valerie should take over after that so as you can see, I am currently playing a Rakan faction and majority of the heroes will be based on my faction. So to start from the left side, I still use Basric and he does an insane amount of damage. I still use Vega just because I have like a specific reliquary build which uh, I keep the army up above 70% so the enemy army would do a lot less damage. Now keep in mind I will be removing vega quite soon probably up to a month until now and adding uh, another hero highly likely in terms of rufio will be testing but i highly doubt it since i don't have uh, prisms and etc to spare I can't aside from that down. i have elana which is a must have on your field in terms of magic resistance buff if you don't have her the enemy dragon and the liches will probably kill your field in seconds so keep in mind, this hero is a must-have. Then I have the Balrog, which is a debuffer, and if you have it on your field, the enemy units or specific enemy units will have less damage and less attack speed. So majority of the time you want this hero on your field either way. I'm listening. As you can see, I have Gan, which is a hero from the Silvani race. The reason for that is increasing the uh, health just for my um, turtle, which in a sense turns to more healing and uh, like buffs uh, towards my frontline and also my Rakan archers. So that is pretty much the reason why you would want to add Gan in the Rakan formation. Now Mako should be self-explanatory just for buffing the uh, Rakan archers. Lyrian, self-explanatory, uh, buffing uh, the uh, humanoid units for the damage reduction when they get morale boost, etc. It's a pretty good tank as well, and probably one of the better tanks at the current moment, which you don't, or rather if you don't have insanely decked out gladiators. Saizo, pretty much self-explanatory, it's a DPS, but it's kind of falling off. More salt. Denji should also be self-explanatory in a Rakan formation. He has a lot of Rakan based buffs. He removes uh, armor or makes your army do more damage to enemy units, etc. And can also become some sort of a DPS towards the backliners if he does tend to reach the backline. Most likely he never does, but still I just use him for uh, debuffing and also healing my entire field. Then we have Talk, which is buffing the entire field, providing buffs to the turtle, and the turtle will be buffing like the entire field as well, as well as like the healing increase, the health, the buffs, all that kind of stuff, the damage reduction in particular fields. Huge buffer, must have for Rakans. Then we have Yip, which will be increasing the damage of the Rakan archers on this side of the field, while also reducing the attack damage of the enemy archers. Valerie, a DPS hero, as said before, insanely overpowered, must have in any field at almost any point in the game currently. Solaris, a uh, pretty huge tank, depending how you build, you can have like this entire uh, squad of um, swordmen alive for quite a long time, and he will not die for at least like 20 seconds whatsoever. Cleo, just for CC and also uh, equipment to buff the two archers. Avalon, buffing the humanoid archers with HP and also Warhorn, which will increase their attack speed. Nora for the damage, 
Flora's for the buffs and invincibility, Raxi is for buffs and debuffs. So as you can see, almost all of the heroes on my field, they have like a specific place on the field and no hero doesn't do anything on it. Like I don't have useless heroes, perhaps like maybe Solaris as he still is like just a buffer debuffer in terms of the prism and just a gladiator that pretty much does nothing just because I don't have a proper artifact on him. But pretty much this is an example of how you should place your heroes, what heroes and how majority of the heroes should be used on your entire field. Anyways, that's pretty much it for the video. Hope you liked it. Thanks for watching guys and stay safe out there.